Hi, I'm Chris Converse from Codify Design Studio. And what I want to do in this introduction video is walk you through the final project that we're going to be creating in this course. When you download the project files, there's going to be folders A through E. Inside of folder E is a copy of the final project. So let's open that up and see what we're going to be building. So we're going to create this interactive animated web page built on top of Twitter Bootstrap. And in addition to the responsive design capabilities, we're also going to be adding in some plugins, the carousel, which is the main item here, which is sliding back and forth, and an auto suggest, which we'll talk about in a moment. And we're also going to use a technique called responsive download. Now this is a technique that we looked at in my first course on Udemy called creating responsive design. And what we're going to be doing is using the carousel that we see here and using CSS to inject all of the images in place. This way we can have much smaller data on a mobile phone and larger, more data on a computer and have the same set of HTML and CSS running for both mobile, tablet, and computer sizes. Now this carousel here is based on a plugin. So we're going to be looking at adding plugins from the Twitter Bootstrap Framework into here. In the upper right hand corner we have a search field here. We're also going to add in some auto-suggest capabilities using a plugin called Typehead. So if I start typing characters here we can see a series of, in this case, country lists showing up. And we'll show you how we can actually add any number of items that show up as the auto-suggest and show you how to put the actual data in there that controls which one of these items is in place. A couple of other features, we have a link down here in the page. Check out this drawbridge. When I click this, notice in the carousel, this is actually going to move over to the drawbridge and actually pause the carousel from playing. So we're also going to show you how to write some simple jQuery statements that are going to control that particular object. Built into the framework is also the ability to have drop down menus. I can come up here and click on services and the drop down menu will open up. Now we can also come over here and take a look at the responsive design aspect. If I start closing this down, we can see that the page actually closes down. All of the columns down here start closing. Content inside of the page condenses down as well. We can continue to move this down. So as I move this down into more portrait tablet mode, we can see the promos over here on the left sort of move over. And then of course we can go down even further, all the way down to the mobile handheld version. So two things happen here. One, we see that the caption of the carousel actually moves under the photography, which again is built into that plugin. And we also see the addition of another item up here. So in addition to all of the responsive design techniques, there's a series of classes you can use inside of Twitter Bootstrap that will automatically turn on and off based on the individual screen size. So in this case, we put a custom class on the phone number and it only shows up in small screen view. You'll also notice a small telephone icon. We're going to create a custom icon that we're going to add to the glyph icons that are part of the Bootstrap framework to show you how we can add additional artwork into the individual icons if we need to. Now the Twitter Bootstrap framework, in addition to supporting responsive design, also supports techniques for using HTML5 and having that work in older browsers such as Internet Explorer. So let's take a second here and look at this in IE. Now here in Windows XP, we're going to load up the same site running in Internet Explorer. There's a couple of key differences you might notice. One is the use of rounded corners. So we see that the icons over here that actually represent the forward and back buttons for the carousel actually show up here as squares. And we don't get the semi-transparency inside of the search field here. However, the type head plugin is still working and I can actually start typing characters and get the auto suggest. You'll see the carousel is moving in the background. Though it doesn't animate side to side, it still works. And one of the other things that's not supported in IE in Windows XP is the responsive nature or the media queries. So if we start to condense this down, we just won't see the individual screens changing. However, Internet Explorer is not going to see that with any of the individual websites. And again, this gives us the ability to code a set of content once and have it work all the way back to IE7. So let's hop over into a more modern browser. Let's come over to Windows 7 running IE9. Inside of here, we're going to see the same user experience that we saw on the Macintosh platform running in Safari. So we have the semi-transparency here. We have the typehead auto-suggest. And we can see the responsive nature that IE9 is showing us because it also supports CSS3 media queries. Now there's one additional aspect I want to talk about, and that is we're going to be taking some techniques from my first course, creating responsive web design on Udemy, and adding in the ability to control the imagery with CSS. So what we're going to do is use CSS to control the images in the carousel. What this is going to do is make the download responsive as well. So this means that somebody visiting your site on a small handheld device is going to download much less data than somebody who looks at it on a tablet or a computer device. So let's take a look at how this is being achieved. I'm going to come back to the operating system and load this back up in Safari. I'm going to right click inside of here and bring up an inspection tool. 
What I'm going to do here is come over to the network panel. I'm going to hit reload and we're going to take a look at how much data gets transferred when somebody looks at this on a computer screen. So down here we can see that there are 20 file requests and the total downloaded data is 476 kilobytes. Let's come back out to our browser. Let's condense this down till we get to our medium size view, which is right here. This is our portrait tablet view. Let's come back to our window. Let's hit reload and we'll see down here we have 353 total kilobytes of data transferred. So that's 26% less than the 477 kilobytes we got from the large screen. Let's come back to our browser. Let's move this down to the handheld size. Let's hit reload, come back to our window. And now we can see the total download here is 291K. So that's 39% less data that they're going to see on a handheld device versus the full computer size. And again, all of this is being achieved through CSS3 media queries. Now back to the project files. I mentioned that there are five sets of folders inside of here. There are two things that I've added to this course to make it a lot easier and faster for you to follow along. So in addition to much smaller movie sizes, which lets you jump around for a quick reference, we also have a folder called Snippets. So what we're going to be doing in the course is you're only going to be typing content that's going to be new or unique. For blocks of content, blocks of CSS that are repetitive, I have all of these individual snippets that we can simply cut and paste from. So again, this is going to give you a really fast chance to see the individual code, but not be inundated with typing a lot of content. And then lastly, we have a skip Photoshop section. So if you don't have Photoshop or don't want to follow along with the Photoshop aspects, I have all of the final graphics in this particular folder. So you can just move these into your project and just focus on the Twitter bootstrap framework. So with that, I hope you find the course interesting. And if so, let's get started with the first movie.